Well, good afternoon. Good evening. What's going on, weirdos? I've got the microphone fixed. I'm starting to figure this thing out. I've even got a transition screen. Can you believe it? I know I can't. You know what else I can't believe? The veterans are getting kicked out of their housing. That's right. Veterans in New York City, homeless veterans, are being removed from their housing. Incredible. What do you say we talk about that today? What do you say we talk about? United States veterans from, I think, Vietnam mainly, and then, of course, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom from Afghanistan and Iraq. Like, getting kicked out of housing. Let's talk about that. Do, 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 do. Boom. Let's bring up some news. Homeless vets are being booted from booted from New York hotels to make room for migrants, says advocates. A lot of people are saying it's happening in uh, Orange County. I know that New York posted a uh, posted about it a couple days ago, and it's something that I wanted to touch on because I thought it was ridiculous. Not so much. You're going to figure out why in a second, right? You're going to figure out why this is going to start getting bone chillingly ridiculous and how just pissed off it's going to make you in a minute. Because you're going to say, hey, you know what, AC? It, it, them getting booted out for migrants, you know what? There's a lot of other things that veterans could, you know, rely on in order to get some things fixed, right? There's a couple of things that they could rely on. You know, they go to homeless shelters. They can go up to, you know, the numerous amount of veteran advocates and businesses out there and non for profits that specifically assist them. We need some assistance for these migrants that are unfortunately coming over illegally because of the end of Title 42. We need places for them, right? They have no assistance. They're here. They're all alone. They're all screwed. We need to help them. And I would say, you know what? That's, I, I can understand that. I guess I can understand that a little bit. But we're not quite there yet. Once you figure out why they're getting kicked out, then you're going to start getting pissed off. Then, then you're going to start getting a little, a little cheesed. So let's start breaking this down a little bit. Volume's a bit low. Turn it up. How's this sound now? We're on a 30-second delay, but I'm just about screaming in my own, in my own headset right now. <laughs> I might have to take off my headset. You're quiet. You volume up, children. It's almost like we always talk about audio on this thing, as if I'm not loud enough. Let's look at it. We're hitting those, we're hitting those mid notes. I think we're good now. So let's start reading this New York Post article. Homeless vets are being booted from New York hotels to make room for migrant advocates. Now at first, like I said, two dozen struggling homeless veterans have been booted for upstate hotels to make room for migrants, says a non-for-profit group that works with vets. The ex-military, including a 24-year-old man, desperate need of help. So a 24-year-old man. That means that he's our age. He's a recent Iraq-Afghanistan veteran. There you go, serving in Afghanistan. We're told by the hotels at the beginning of the week that temporary housing was getting pulled out from under them at establishments. They'd have to move to another spot. Oh, just go to another spot, man. You go to another spot. Screw it, right? Just walk down the street to another hotel. You'll figure it out. I hope they gave them that information. That'd be nice. Instead of just kicking them out and seeing find another spot, hopefully they gave them that information. I don't know if they did. Let's be honest with each other. They probably didn't. Our vendors have been placed in another hotel due to what's going on with the immigrants, said the CEO of the Israel Colonial Foundation. Disabled military raised awareness for premature births as well as open hour. I the vets called me on Sunday, she said. Had to leave the, ex the hotel because the hotel said the extended stay is not available. Now, I don't know if it's in this article, but I know that specifically veterans were getting, it was like $88 a day to stay in a hotel up to 30 days so then they could get on their feet and then move to more permanent housing or at least get a job, start to get their own apartments, government-assisted living, Start moving forward. You know what I mean? 
So let's go. So there's a bus of just people coming in. I don't think, I think it's just a normal bus. I don't think that's migrants coming from the south. I think they just got a photo of the Port Authority moving folks. That's one thing that I like can't stand. Veterans have been booed from about like news articles is some of their stock footage. You think that their footage is from the actual event, and it ain't. The other five displaced veterans were split between two other local facilities, Super 8 and the Hampton Inn Suites in Middletown. All right. So they moved the displaced veterans to other hotels. Cool, right? Once again, everybody's going to say, hey, man, not a big deal, right? Not a big deal. They were moved. You can move people. They're homeless veterans. They're not just getting thrown out back on the street. They're getting moved to the appropriate locations. But I'm not at the good part yet. Let's see if I can't find it. Crossroads Super 8. Post on Friday. Let me respond. Okay, they didn't respond. Let's see if we can't get to the good stuff. We need to put veterans first. I appreciate that. Here we go. Here. Here is where the fantastic. This is why these two motels kick veterans out. Because they're not giving them enough money. Oh, man. They're not getting enough money. Now, for people in New York like myself, who live in New York State, this is the part that kind of pisses you off. It's so unfair because at the end of the day, we're a small non-for-profit. We do not pay $88 a day for veterans to be there. And we do pay $88 a day for veterans to be there. So they pay $88 a day, right? Almost 90 bucks a day. But what, uh, while it's unclear what the city is paying upstate, Various reports deal between the Big Apple and Manhattan hotels have been called for payments such as $190 a night, part of an estimated $4.3 billion <laughs> migrant price tag for taxpayers through spring 2024. So this is what's happening. You're having hotels receiving veterans, homeless veterans, right, off the street, and the not-for-profits are saying, hey, Here's the $88 a day to take care of these homeless veterans. Just give them a place to stay, shower, clean up so they can get back on their feet, move forward, or, you know, eventually move to a longer term, longer care facility. Awesome. These hotels said, nah, 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 nah. We don't want to be charitable. We don't want to be nice. We don't even want to take your money because we want more money. We want, we want $190 a night, which is going to be apparently paid for by American, by American, by New York taxpayers, part of an estimated 4.3 billion migrant price tag for taxpayers through spring of 2024. Now, I don't know if that's federal. 4.3 billion sure sounds like a lot. I wonder what the average, what is the economic, the annual, what, what's a good way to say, how much does New York State make in a year based off its economy? What is the annual New York State economy? Let's see that. $1.5 trillion. Okay, cool. So definitely, I feel very, very confident here in saying that New York State, your, you taxpayers are going to pay $4.3 billion just through the spring of 2024 to boot veterans out, homeless veterans out of hotels, pay Double what they were paying in rent for per room, right, per night for illegal immigrants. Now, I'm not anti-immigrant. I'm a, Obviously, the working class of the United States needs people. Like, we, we need people. There's nothing wrong with being a, a laborer. My father was a plumber. I, I absolutely love the skilled labor professions. All right, what are they called? Oh, man, there's like a term. Skilled labor. Oh, I'm blanking on it. Uh, of course. Of course I'm blanking on it. The trades. There we go. The trades need people, man. And you can make a lot of money in the trades. There's nothing wrong with getting your hands dirty and working your way up in America. There's nothing wrong with that. What I have a problem with is people coming here illegally, and now I've got to pay $4.3 billion out of New York State so I can keep you floating around. While my friends, while people that I potentially served with overseas are getting kicked out, right? Like, come on. What are you saying, Derna, 1804? Policy and rules of engagement in Afghanistan didn't make sense unless the whole point was to kill or imprison as many troops as possible. 
love our country enough to risk our lives. Maybe that's scary for some people. This is no surprise. Unfortunately, it is no surprise that you're having people lose their charitable senses when it comes to veterans. So here we are. Here, what are these two freaking hotels called again? You know, there's another story that I read where um, a woman from, there's a, a wedding party, you know, just in case like you don't know a veteran or you think the veterans get too much stuff, whatever, you know, or you're like, hey, it's not for profits. They're trying to make as much money as they can and they're taking it off the government's time. I'm sure if somebody else would have paid more, they'd, uh, they'd push them in. There is a woman and a man from out of country that are coming in and bringing their entire wedding party, their bridal party, groomsmen, etc. They're from out of the country, bringing them into New York City to get married. They got so many rooms booked up in one of these hotels. I forget which one it is. And they were like, oh, hey, listen, is our, uh, is our hotel rooms, are, there, are they good to go? And they said, oh, no, sorry. We didn't tell you that we canceled your rooms for your wedding, for your magical special day with all your family and friends. But we did. They're canceled. You ain't getting them because we've got guaranteed 190 bucks a day so we can kick veterans out and kick you out. Oh, God. I would boycott those places so bad. I think one of them was like a. Oh, where are you? The Crossroads Super 8. Where the vets are now staying had no comment when contacted by the post arrived. So I believe it's the Crossroads Super 8 and the hotel where the vets are now staying. So is it the Crossroads and the Super 8 that are kicking them all out? I remember those I was being too about Super 8 Hampton and Suites in Middletown French. Okay. 1500 Crossroads. 1500 got the heave ho from the Crossroads Hotel in Newburgh. Boom. So the Crossroads Hotel in Newburgh. Let's, let's look up the Crossroads. Hotel in Newburgh. Crossroads Hotel in Newburgh. Do 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 do. Boop. Reservations. Hmm. <laughs> do we have just the actual like hotel thing? I see. I see. We're down here for address. Oh. Contact this property for rates and availability. <laughs> Boy, man. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, don't do it. Don't do it. But at the same time, I mean, I would say email. I, I don't want anybody to call them and harass them because that's just, God, that's so absolutely horrible. But emails? Yeah, emails definitely. Could you? I'm not telling you to do this. I don't want you to do this. Could you imagine? 1,500 people that are watching this right now just saying, you know what? I'm not going to watch this live stream for like two minutes. I'm throughout this live stream. I'm just randomly going to call them and just ask them if there's any availability for who <laughs> get homeless veterans. Oh, man. They would get bombarded. Don't do that. If you're going to do that, just send them emails. Just tell them how jerky they are. Oh, my God. Veterans got caught in the middle of a fight between Texas and New York. Veterans are probably more respected in Texas than New York. And I'm saying that as a vet who knows vets who used to work in New York City. Now I live elsewhere, says RS. Balls and holes. <laughs> Dude's got a name in the chat named Balls and Holes. Incredible. Oh, God. So there we are. There we are. The Crossroads, the Crossroads Hotel. In Newburgh, New York, I'm assuming. I'm going to be New Jersey, right? Where, where is it? Where are you? Newburgh, New York. Kicking, not I'm possibly wounded veterans, but kicking homeless veterans out because they can get a better price tag from you and me, New York taxpayer, Joe Schmo taxpayer in New York. Literally double plus some to house illegal immigrants. Good Lord. What is this world coming to? Oh. By the way, in case you don't follow me on Instagram, I ask all my Instagram followers, and I put it out on Twitter too, I ask all my Instagram followers, what do you want to talk about today? And a couple of you guys talked about this, so I decided to write some of your things down. Whoop, whoop, there you go. 
That way I would know what to talk about. That way you are controlling the conversation, not just in the chat, but also on Instagram. You're giving me the topics that you want to talk about. That way I can kind of look them up and I can give you this fantastic breakdown before we even break it down. Before we even go through the article, what do I know what's going on? I know what's going on. How do I know what's going on? Well, because I'm reading this stuff before you are. It is disgusting. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. R.I.P. Super 8 in New York. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Let's start looking at. Oh, here's an interesting thing. Vape. Oh, yeah. Vape pen private. Somebody asked me about vape pen private. There was a uh, man a while ago. Let's see if he's on TikTok. Ooh, I need, you know what I need to do? I need to, boom, do that before I go to TikTok and start throwing around anything. Let's see. Oh, what was that guy? What was his name called? The, the, that's where the money's at guy. How much, what was, what was, because that's where the money's at. What was that guy's name? Oh, man. I wish I could remember his name because I knew exactly what happened. Oh, where are you? Where are you, my special little bird? Does anybody in the chat remember what that cat's name was? I'm going to have to look back on my YouTube channel and just... See if I can find out what that dude's name was. We're looking for that guy. His name was Tor. That's right. His name was Tor something. Oh, let's 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 find Tor. Let's see where Tor is. I know where he is. I know exactly what happened to Tor. I was going to make a video about him a while ago. The where are they now? Where are they now video with our favorite private? Tor, 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 tor. Tor, I'm seeing, yeah, I know it's Tor. I know it's Tor something, but I just can't find them. And there's so many Tors. He's got like, I got like Tortellini. I got torn hibiscus plants. I got torn nuts. I know his name is Private Tor, but what was his handle? Oh, man, if I could find his handle, I could show you what he's doing. And it's not going to be, I mean, I won't be able to search it. It'll be so long, Private Vapes. Let me go into my, my YouTube channel and just see if I can find an old video and see if I talk about him. Bam, 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 bam. All right, where are you? Come on, money man. Because that's where the money's at. Because that's where the money's at. Might be one of my favorite little, little, little cuts, little, little snippets of a video. It might be my favorite. Man, how many videos do I put out? Can't find this kid. I'm going like through three. Mia Khalifa. What a dunce. Bam, bam, bam. All right. Where are you now? I'm getting close. I know I'm getting close. There, a soldier makes TikTok on why he's being kicked out of the army. Let's see if I can't find it. Let's see if I can't look in the video. What's up, Bobby? Bobby O'Connor, I love you too, man. Let's see if I can't look in the video and see if this guy's name is up. I know he changed it. He got rid of it. Andrew just pulled us. He got rid of it. But I wonder if his new one is still up. I see Daiquiri Tor. Is that it?
No, it's not Daiquiri Tour. Daiquiri, whatever. Okay, okay. I'm looking through my video. I'm trying to see if I got... Oh, I can't see it. It's just, it's so blurry. It's something Carly 205. Carry Knopp. Got him. Oh, let's go. Carry Knopp. I think, he, I think he took it down. Oh, I think he took it down. Well, all right. We'll talk about what happened with our, our friend here. Where is it? All right. So we got our boy here. Oh, geez. Not like that. There we go. We got our boy here, Kari. Tor. Private Tor. Who got kicked out of the army. Because he, not once, but twice, decided that he would go back to his basic training world, back to his unit that he did basic training is where, where, where all of his drill sergeants knew who he was and decided that he was going to sell vapes, little vape pens to all his little friends and comrades that were chilling out in basic training land. Now, if anybody knows anything about basic training land and doing the wrong thing, you would know that drill sergeants are really good at knowing when something is wrong, right? It's our job. Our job is to go and look around and see, hey, that thing's wrong. We need to fix it. Hey, that guy doesn't look like he belongs here. Let's figure out why we're good at it. This kid not only decided to go down to basic training and sell apes once and got caught, he went down a little while afterwards after already getting in trouble, after having being kicked off post, being told not to go there no more, having pictures of himself posted all around the battalion and basic training areas of, look out for this guy. Well, you better look out for this guy because he don't belong here. He's trying to sell vapes. He went down again. And he got caught. So he gets kicked out of the army, right? Duh, of course he gets kicked out of the army. He didn't listen the first time. First off, he did the wrong thing when he went down there the first time. And then after being told specifically what not to do, when being told not to go to that post and given so many more rules, he went right back down to this basic training land. And now he's getting caught again. So he's getting kicked out. He gets kicked out, right? Now, this is the sad thing. I, this is why I didn't make a follow-up video on him, I think, the first time. was because I just thought it was so sad. Private Tor here, thinking that his life was going to be so much better because he knew where the money was at, because that's where the money's at. He knew where the money was at. Unfortunately, that... that Fortunately, he was wrong. He didn't know where the money was at. It wasn't in vaping. It wasn't in scooting the system and trying to be a, a bad member of the E4 Mafia, a bad shammer, right? He was doing the stupid shams. He wasn't doing the smart shams that help people out, get you out of trouble. He was doing the shams that get you put on a pedestal, that get the spotlight put on you and say, everybody, look at that guy. Don't do that. Well, he gets kicked out of the army. And then he starts making some brilliant business videos out of a storage unit. And you might say, well, why is he making business videos out of a storage unit? Well, you know, he's probably got a small business in that storage unit. And he says he does. He's like, hey, yeah, I'm working out of the storage unit now. It's not that bad. And I'm not sleeping in the storage unit, but I work here all day because he, private tour, he found out a way around the system. He said in one of his videos, he goes, I can stay here all day. I just can't sleep here. So what I do, what private tour does is he, Goes in his car and falls asleep in his car during the night and then drives during the day into the storage unit and then stays in the storage unit all day and starts his business and starts moving and shaking and getting all these things done yet. And, it, and man, so many people kept asking him, dude, don't you think that you messed up? Don't you think that you could have just done better? You already had a job and at least a positive future in front of you. It just, just. Just based on being in the military. Hey, man, at least you got three uh, three hots in a cot, right? Three square meals a day and a place to sleep. At least you got that. On top of so much more, like, like pay and medical insurance and all this other crap, right? And since, instead of just realizing what he had at hand and thinking that he's got to, like, juxta the system and get an extra, like, what? $150 a month from selling vapes to some chumps? He now ends up. 
basically living out of a storage unit, sleeping in his car. And when people ask him, hey, man, did you learn on his little videos, on his TikTok videos? Hey, man, don't you think it, it was like a bad thing? He's like, nah, man, I wouldn't change it. I'm just learning. You know, this helps me learn, man. This motivates me. This is a good thing. I needed this. Oh, I'm cracking my neck. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just, ah, it gets me. I'm more upset at this freaking kid for throwing away his future. I don't know. Now, hopefully he bounces back. I, I honestly wish the kid the best. I hope that he learns from it. I, I pray that he decides, you know what? I messed up. Maybe enough time has elapsed. Maybe I can get into the guard and the reserves and at least start something and then transfer over to active component. Because Tor, let me tell you, military is hurting, kid. Military needs some hard chargers, all right? Their recruiting numbers are down. So you might be able to get back in. And let me tell you, don't, don't waste this opportunity, man. Don't be stuck. Don't, don't be like private tour children. All right. Don't be like private snuffy. Everybody says private snuffy. That's like your, your general tone. Don't be like private snuffy. Private snuffy is tour. Ugh. Working, living, everything but sleeping out of a storage unit, sleeping in his car. Just because he thought that he was smarter than the system. Listen, you can, you can pull it over the system every once in a while, but you can't pull it over all the time. Jeremiah, I appreciate you. He says, more crack house money. Try to give me three. Nice try. Oh, somebody. Her sure's cur? Her sure's kex. Oh, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say the name anymore. Dirtbag private shirt is a hit at work. Good. I'm glad. Be a dirtbag. Be a good dirtbag. Be the dirtbag in the right way. Be a dirtbag that doesn't make his shams and scams weigh on the shoulders of other people, right? Sham other people up. Sham up. That could be a shirt. Sham up. C. Scott says he needs a follow-up on Bus Guy. Bro, I made a video about Bus Guy, I think like last month. Bus Guy pled insanity. For those of you that don't know, Guy, let's see, I can't find him. Soldier. Soldier takes bus hostage. Here he is, Army trainee, hijacks school bus and full of children. School bus hijacking. That's going to get demonetized. But so this kid, and I made a video about this whole entire thing, cracking jokes about him because he's a doofus. And then I made a video about how he got off scot-free. I shouldn't say scot-free, but he pled insanity. And <laughs> the judge, the, uh, the prosecutor and defense all said, yeah, 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 this, this kid's nuts. This kid over here is, uh, he's crazy. Oh, this kid right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely crazy. This, this kid's crazy. Yeah, I think this kid's crazy. They all decided that he was crazy. And so, <laughs> so he's just going to go get a psyche veil. And the crazy thing is, how, how do his parents, his parents in the article, it talks about how mom said that he was having some hallucinations. He was hearing things that weren't there, and they were trying to tell him and help him say, listen, those things aren't there. Let's join the army. You can join the army still and, and help out. No, mom and dad, if, if Bucko is listening to voices that aren't there, I don't think that a stressful combat environment, a simulated stressful combat environment as basic training is, is a good spot for your kid, right? Probably not the best, which is why he had a psychotic break and then just tried to run out of there. And he had such a bad psychotic break that while handcuffed behind his back, he ran off of, I think it was the second story of a holding center, like a stairwell, whatever, whatever have you. Jumps off of a stairwell with a handcuffed behind his back because he's just trying to get away because he thinks everybody's trying to kill him and breaks his leg and breaks his arm or something. Yo, that's, I blame mom and dad. I blame mom and dad for letting them, like how is, if he doesn't have a history of it in like a medical history of it, how is his recruiter supposed to know? How are, people at MEPS at military entrance, entrance, military entrance processing center. 
front, some whatever. Maps is where you enter whenever you're trying to join the military, regardless of branch. How are the people at Maps going to be like, oh yeah, it's got a history of something, if you never put it down on paper? So mom and dad looked at son and said, don't say nothing. He shuts up about his mental illness, goes to basic training. Everybody's happy. He hijacks a bus with a, thank God, unloaded weapon. Scouring a, like a dozen kids. And now because nobody did their due diligence, specifically mom and dad, not nobody, because mom and dad didn't say, hey, he's uh, he's literally, he's a little off. Maybe we shouldn't uh, send him to the army. Boom. He's ruining a bunch of people's day. Guys, I appreciate the super chats. Thanks for jumping in and saying what's up. Always, always a good time. Wouldn't, wouldn't line to maps be a bad idea? Let me tell you something. So I got one of the uh, interesting questions that you guys gave to me on Instagram is, what is the deal with the Army's recruitment issues, right? And I'll shoot it to you straight. One of the reasons why the military is having such a hard time with recruiting is this this thing called Genesis, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Genesis is the word. Let me look it up. Let's just make sure. U.S. How do you spell Genesis? Oh, with an E. With another E because I'm stupid. The Electronic Health Re Record Genesis. Okay, cool. So let me tell you about Genesis. Genesis is an electronic health record. Duh, says it right there, right? That tracks like everything. Ever since you were little, I don't know how it started. I don't know when it came to be. But if you have been, if you're like 20 something years old, it knows your entire medical history. If you took an allergy test, if you got, what's some dumb stuff that happens when you're little? If you, if you had like asthma when you were five, if you were on an inhaler when you were five, if you, uh, if you had like, even like thoughts of suicide, you went to go see like somebody about it. Uh, if you were on antidepressants, if you had tubes in your ears when you were a kid, Genesis finds everything. And I'm not saying that being aware of medical illnesses or a medical past is a bad thing. You should be aware of a medical past. We just brought up a story, a crazy guy running through and hijacking buses, right? Because we didn't know his medical history. So knowing somebody's medical history is important, but Genesis pulls up every little freaking thing. And because there's every little freaking thing, like I said, tubes in your ears, asthma when you were five, it says you need a doctor's note stating that you don't have it anymore. And some of these things, I, I don't even know. Well, some of these things require the doctor that you had when you were five to say, oh uh, yeah, it was just when he was five and he's, he's okay now. Even though you haven't had, let's say an inhaler prescription for the past 15 years. They say you still need that doctor to sign off on it. Well, what if that doctor was 80 years old when you were five and now he's dead? Well, you got to Now you got to like go through all this bullshit to try and just join the military and it flags you for everything. So it's such a massive pain in the ass that you just, all these troops just end up getting kicked out or they just end up not giving a shit about like, I listen, I can't keep up with all these military doc documents that you want me to bring in. I don't have them anymore. And the recruiter goes, well, I need them. And you go, well, I can't have them. And I don't know how to produce them because you haven't told me how. And all the people that are supposed to have them are dead and gone or they moved or they're out of business now. They're no longer doctors. So I, I, I got no one to contact. So now they're just like, screw it. I'm not even going to try to go in the military anymore. And they're gone. And people who would be normally fantastic soldiers are getting just kicked out because they can't lie anymore. I'm not saying that you should lie. But somebody, somebody got into the army when they had, was it sports bronchitis? When they were like a teenager, like a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 10-year-old. Do you have asthma? Nope. No, we can't check that. You're in. Sweet. And now here I am. I bet you some one star, two star, three star is watching this live stream or having somebody watch a live stream for him and saying, damn it, we should have kicked him out. We should have known. We should have known. We'll get him for lying. Glad I can keep it real for you, Samuel. 
Oh my gosh. Genesis, the electric. It's, it's, it's the worst. If, if you could find something that would prevent you from doing your job, that's a good question for chat. Listen up, chat. Tell me. I don't know if you can think of one. Is there a tool, some sort of software, something implemented at your work that was supposed to help you do something more efficiently? But now, all it does is just hinder you from doing your job. All it does is just slow everything down, make it so mundane or harder to do. Do you have any of those in your job chat? Let me know. Because let me tell you, for recruiting, for the military trying to make its numbers, the thing that was supposed to help them get mil medical documents super fast was Genesis. But the thing that knocked them down a peg and said, sucks to suck, your life now sucks even more than before. We're making it harder, not even easier. We brought you this thing that's making it harder than before. Oh. Let's see what chat's got to say about that. Did I see the soldier who had her home moved into by a criminal now has to go to court to get him evicted? Let me tell you, COVID jacked everything up. It gave everybody that was a dirtbag the right to live in somebody else's home, which does not make sense. I don't care. Ooh. And evictions. I, I don't understand how evictions work the way that they work. You, do you know? Everybody hates landlords, right? They're slumlords that, you know, that suck. But most landlords are guys like me that just like buy a crack house and then decide that they're going to rent it out. And if somebody comes in and just decides to squat there, it takes months to kick them out, especially in New York. If you don't pay your rent, I'm not saying I'm going to go into your house and drag you out. But boy, I sure would think about it. Just show up with a bunch of friends with some masks on. Tell them that it's COVID. And then, yoink, everything's outside on the street. Oh, Eric says, switching software systems in healthcare. It always seems to jack everything up. <laughs> the entire Air Force promotion system was crippling my email. Oof. <laughs> People said PowerPoint. Yo, you're lucky you've got PowerPoint. Now everybody's got PowerPoint. You've got a Google account. You got Google Slides. It's the best. The only thing is uh, death by PowerPoint. Everything is a damn PowerPoint presentation. Listen, PowerPoint is it's good up until a point. Once you start using it as a crutch, it's horrible. Don't be a lazy instructor, right? And maybe it's not PowerPoint. Don't be a lazy instructor. That'd be my my two cents for people that hate PowerPoint. You might hate listening to PowerPoint. That I understand. That I get. But sometimes it's the easiest way to get through some stuff. That or maybe a YouTube video to show you what not to do. Not saying that I've been in training environments or my videos have been used in training environments, but they have. And I appreciate that. Oh, do do do. Microsoft Teams. My meetings went from one week to three a day. Pray for Mojo. Oh, man. Microsoft Teams. I'll give you that. I'll absolutely say that Microsoft Teams. It was supposed to help everybody. And then all of a sudden, you're just, everybody's going into meetings for like five hours a day talking about shit that doesn't. Listen up, leaders. Here we go. Listen up, O threes and above. Listen up. First sergeants and above in, in the non-commissioned officer corps. Microsoft Teams is not a FaceTime on your phone that you can use to talk to all your troops about whatever it is you want to talk to. People got shit to do. And let me tell you, right now, people are abusing Microsoft Teams so much in the United States military that they are preventing their lower, the troops under them, their subordinates, from getting work done because all they're doing is say, let's FaceTime. Let's go on our own Discord on Teams here and let's talk about shit that could be sent in an email like that. Listen, if you want this information, say send it to me in an email. 
and then they'll send it to you in an email and you can read it at your own discretion. Stop holding up your leaders that are below you with Microsoft Teams. My camera angle sucks. I'm looking thin with a goofy dome. All right. Well, I'll try to change it. Bill Jefferson Clinton, even though I know you're not the real one. The world more needs more knife hand. I believe you. My God, I don't know if that is a conspiracy theory, but is it, it is interesting, and it touches on our first topic today. A flood of illegals is intentional to convince people to vote in a digital ID to prove citizenship to better control the real citizens. I don't, don't really know about that. There you go. Thanks, Ben, for the happy meal. Is Gary from the thumb drive, Private Potato's dad. Also, the, sp the first space vessel will be Private Potato, the USS Potato. I don't know. I don't, God, you know what? I, making that video with Gary, in case you don't know, somebody sent me a, it's one of the videos that you can see on the channel. Gary is a guy that sent me a letter, a handwritten letter with a thumb drive in it and said, I want you to plug this in. This is a report for you and Master Chief. And he was referring to Master Chief in the Navy SEALs that's retired, since retired. And Gary definitely is not on the same plane that we are. Gary does not think in a linear storyline. Gary likes to think all craziness. And Gary thinks that he's got some sort of what was it? He said he's got over a thousand children because he was a part of a, oh, we, he said, oh, what's it called? AI, but not artificial intelligence. It was artificial insemination with some Russians and all this other stuff. Gary's a little off, but I felt torn about making that video with Gary because I didn't want to get Gary in trouble and I didn't want to poke fun if Gary has a, some sort of. odd mental facet that maybe the rest of us don't have. But I thought the way that I did it was, was kind of tasteful. Not picking on Gary himself, but picking on the story that Gary was trying to tell us. Let's see. Never thought I'd see the day veterans are treated so poorly and openly, and no one will admit they are. But now it's a trend. Well, we do. Veterans do. Let me tell I said it once. I'll say it again. All we have is us, veterans. All we have is us. And we need to rely on one another. That being said, maybe some seals on the internet should stop pissing and moaning about each other and if a, on public forums and have a private powwow where they can complain about not liking one's running style or the patch that one other guy wears or whether or not they call them up for support while they were going through some legal troubles. Maybe, maybe... Those personal tiffs that we have shouldn't be aired out in public. We can all just shut up and be nice to one another. I know. Strange stuff coming from the guy that shits on people on the internet. Oh. Gentleman says, do I like Primo cigars? Yes, I do. What's my favorite kind? His favorite is Espinosa cigars. Mine are uh, Warfighter Tobacco. I like Warfighter Tobacco. They're veteran owned. They're absolutely delicious. We've got a whole bunch of them. I, just, well, I used to have more, but I keep smoking them. Warfighter Tobacco is my favorite. Your stream's a little bit too quiet. I love the guy that is named Bill Clinton in the chat. He cracks me up. Gary, somebody goes, Gary appreciates I didn't dog on him. Gary removed your name from his hit list as he's what? Putting a lipstick on like in Billy Madison. That's a good one. All right, let's talk about something else. Let's see if we can't get into...
says the border media situation. Somebody just said, let's look at the border. Let's just go to the YouTubes. Let's look at the YouTubes. Let's see what's going on on the border. Going on the YouTubes. U.S. Mexico border. As you guys in chat crack me up sometimes with your inappropriate crap. 1986, join the Navy. We got F-14s and battleships. 2023, join the Navy. You can tweak and drag for salty seamen. Listen up, Navy. All right, let me tell you what. All these salty sailors that are upset that a guy in drag back in like September was promoting the Navy. A, a sailor that also dressed in drag was promoting the Navy. You know what happens when you cross the freaking uh, the equator? Hmm? Huh? No, you know what happened? Everybody's so upset in the Navy about a guy wearing drag and promoting the Navy. You, you know what happens when you cross the equator? They're seamen, huh? You go, what is it? You join the, um, oh, now I got to Google it. Now I got to look it up. The Order of Poseidon, if I'm not mistaken. Navy. Order of Poseidon. Right. When crossing. When crossing the equator. Line crossing ceremony. Crossing the line. Back to the wood ships crossing the lines. Doesn't need to test you. Boom. The real test of seafarers. It's like called the Order of Poseidon, if I'm not mistaken. Let's let's look this up. Let's see. Land crossing ceremony, crossing equator. King Neptune. There we go. Featuring featuring King Neptune. So not Poseidon. Close, right? Come on, the Navy sometimes carried out passengers entertainment. So you, when there is a, it is like a week long event. Where those that have not crossed the equator and get the order of Neptune, once you do, come a, a shellback, right? You go from a polywog or a tadpole, it's polywog to a shellback. A lot of, lot of history in the Navy, which is one reason why I like the Navy. But during the ceremony, at the end of your week-long line-crossing ceremony shenanigans, leading up to get that, that honorable title of Neptune, or whatever it's called, Guys put on drag shows. They they pretend to be women. They put on makeup. They get all dialed up. They do embarrassing stuff. They have like a little talent show. And every single one of them, you can't tell me one didn't. Every single one of them had a guy dress up as some sort of female in some sort of weird risque thing, do a sexy dance and go away. So for everybody to freak out about one drag queen saying, yeah, you should join the Navy. She, I don't, I just don't get it. It means you never, it means you, if you freak out about that in the Navy, it means you probably never crossed the equator, which means were you really even in, were you really even in the Navy if you didn't even cross the equator, become a shellback, order a Neptune, huh? Are you, were you really even in the Navy if you had to do some stupid dance and pretend like you were some broad just to entertain all your guys? It's like some, not really hazing, but kind of hazing, but good hazing, not the kind that gets you sent in the hospital, right? No, nobody ever talks about that. Everybody, especially cats that, and other branches that don't know dick about the Navy. I know a lot about, I don't know a lot about. I know enough to get by about the other branches. I like military history. But these guys who served in one branch, not the Navy or Marines, would be like, oh, they're wearing drag. I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a line crossing ceremony. They do far worse. Probably they make them drink seawater and dress up as frogs and King Neptune and uh, all that other crap. Get over it. You want to join the military? You going to stand next to me while we defend our country? I don't. Then I don't care what you do in your personal time. Now, is it like a bad look? Do I want like guys in like goth clothing, like biting the heads off a bat and be like, join the army? No, not really. So I can understand why people might be upset about the commercials, but the individual, the individual's actions on his own. Like, who gives a who gives a crap? Totally not the FBI says he wants to come to a Bills game. 
You should. Bills games are the bomb. Crimea River. That's a great name. Crimea River is this cat's name. Loves what I'm doing. I appreciate you. Line crossing ceremony. That's, you, that's just the one thing that kills me is you'll have people freak out just to freak out. No, I know I freak out, but I like to point fun at shit. Because everything's funny, or nothing is. And if everything's funny, then everything's funny. Now, take that as you will. But just Navy guys. This is the Navy that I joined. Did you cross the equator? Did you see some of the stupid shit that you used to do back in the day? Yeah, it is your Navy guy. It's your Navy. This guy, just instead of being like holed up in the ship trying to pretend like he's not gay, is just like now just openly gay. That's it. Instead of him, never mind. <laughs> I'm going too far into this unknown person's personal life. Will the crack house be done this decade? Yes, I, I was hoping for it to be done now, but drywalling has taken a little while. We'll get, don't worry, the crack house is going to get some videos. It's kind of boring right now. The crack house is, it's just drywall. You got white walls, they got lines in them, and you got white walls that don't. That's the crack house right now. So I'm trying to get painters in, trying to get kitchen, ca kitchen cabinets up, which is going to be something you can actually look at. An interesting thing for an episode, time lapse. And then it'll be floors and some of the touch-ups. I got to figure out what to do. I'm probably going to tile the upstairs bathroom. Holy shit. Oh, this is a good one. This is why I like the chat. This is why I like it when you talk to me. William says, I was in the, I was in the incomers briefing for third ID for wrestling, killing, and eating alligators. I was the example for not messing with the wildlife. Let me tell you, if you become the reason for a briefing, a good briefing like that, a good briefing like that, where you're the guy that wrestled, killed, and then decided to cook and eat an alligator, you're a living legend. I can only imagine. Oh, man, blow the chat up with that. I want to hear some funny, interesting things that you guys have had to get briefings over that somebody's done when you're at a post. Man, I was deploying over to Iraq for my second tour, and I was in Fort Dix, New Jersey, doing pre-mob, and they were telling us something that uh, some soldiers did. They're like, hey, listen, don't go out. Don't get too drunk. Don't come to the gate. Give them your ID. And then when they say, are you drunk? Floor it through the gate. And then get stopped at the, at the stop sticks. Like those massive like pylons that block you from going anywhere. And then call up a friend for a ride. And then have your friend come over, who's also drunk, to come pick you up. So then everybody gets arrested. It was something, it was something to that effect. Speaking of drag, you still got that wig? Of course I do. Bro bet lives on. Oh, here we go. The American Patriot asks, Hey, AC, I've been thinking about joining the Army. However, I am concerned about the wokeness that has come up recently. Would you still join today? Yes. Yes, I would. But I, when I joined, I just wanted to join. I just wanted to get in. And honestly, depending on what job you do in the military, I would assume, that less wokeness touches it. If you're in an office all day, you're probably going to get a little bit more wokeness than anybody else. If you're out doing combat arm stuff, you're probably going to get a lot less wokeness because you're out in the field doing stuff. And then they're going to come bringing in and say, hey, listen, you got to have this annual meeting, this biannual safety briefing, this something annual whatever briefing to make sure that you're not being too mean and hurting other people's feelings. But once that's done, it's done. You're back out in the field and you're training. Plus, this thing comes in waves. It, it always comes in waves. You remember when everybody was politically correct for like two or three years? South Park did an episode on it. They're like, how long is political correctness going to last? It's like, oh, like four or five years last time. Yeah, that's right. Four or five years last time. It's the same thing. People lost their minds during Trump. Then they overcorrected. And then eventually they're going to correct and get back in the middle. Oh, someone said Bragg. Bragg had a policy letter that if Toy had an energy drink, 
then you must have, or if you had an energy drink, you must have one liter of water. A dude had a heat stroke on the land nav course and died. And he, all he had was Red Bull, no water. Let me tell you. You know, young soldiers, privates, airmen, marines, etc. I know that you, there are so many mind-numbingly dumb stories or safety briefings that you get, but it's because your fellow compatriots have messed up so bad that you, you just need as much help as you can get to try and point you in the wrong direction. Do you think that any grown man would have to tell someone, hey, buddy, maybe you shouldn't just drink super sugary soda waters before you go do a bunch of physical fitness. Maybe you should drink water, right? No, 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 these morons start just chugging Red Bull. Not thinking, oh, I can do it. I'll be fine. I, it's what I've done before. They get super dehydrated, end up shitting themselves with horrible diarrhea because that happens too. They're, it's a di Some of these energy drinks are diuretics and they, oh, they just shoot right out of you if you drink too many. I've seen too many things to know that that's true. That somebody falls over and brag. I think I was in brag when that happened. That sounds super familiar. When it might not even been brag. It might have just been everywhere else. Because you know the good idea fairy happens in one freaking post. And then it's going to happen somewhere else. So, yeah, I, I heard that. Every time you have an energy drink, you need to drink a canteen of water. Like, I'm a grown-ass man. Why you got to be telling me how to do that? Because, because you're dumb. Because a lot of you are dumb. All right, weirdos, we've hit our one hour limit. I'm not going to limit it all the time, but we got through a lot of things that I wanted to talk about today. We got through a couple things on your list. We got to go talk to you on chat. Those of you that decided to come by and stop, give me a little chat and see what's going on. I appreciate that. I'm always going to talk to you. And you know what? Things are only going to get better. This is only my second live stream. I was able to fix the microphone. I got like two transitions now. I'm starting to figure out how to do the split screen straight. Script this straight on split screen straight split screen straight on split screen. Here we go. Look at this. We're learning together. It's only going to get better from here. Uh, my next step is probably to have background music so it doesn't just sound as echoey, right? A little bit softer on the ears. Now I just got to figure out how to get background music on here that isn't copywritten. Copyrighted? Copywritten? Copyright? Copyright? English is an interesting language. New segment, my safety brief. I should start that off every time. Just this safety brief. Before we come in here, just like a disclaimer. None of this represents the DOD, United States military, Army National Guard. These thoughts are of my own. Do not represent those of the U.S. Army, DOD, Army National Guard. It wouldn't be a bad idea. Someone I know used a dip pan from under an aircraft engine and restricted area rope to snowboard between a police unit on post during a snowstorm in full battle rattle. That is just, that man deserves a POB. Are we serious? Are we serious? Used a drip pan from under an aircraft engine and restricted area rope to snowboard behind a police unit on post. In a so if you're saying snowboard behind a police unit, that would mean that the MPs were pulling a fellow MP or somebody that they knew in a drip pan. That sounds like Fort Drum. That sounds like Fort Drum. Because Fort Drum, you get so freaking bored that you would do just about anything, regardless of if it gets you in trouble. You'd get in trouble just to have something to do. Just to have a story to tell. Because it gets so gosh dang boring. Bob O'Connor, I will keep it up. All right, weirdos. I appreciate you coming in here on Tuesdays. I'm going to try and be... I'm going to try and be... I'm going to try and post live stream Tuesdays or Wednesdays when my... Uh, when my schedule allows it, if it needs to change, which it may to end of the week or weekends, maybe in the beginning of weeks, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. My schedule rotates. And so therefore, for like four or five weeks, it's going to be Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And for four and five weeks, it's going to be another day. But I'll always keep you posted. Once again, if you want to support the channel, check out angry-cops.com. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. That way you can give me fantastic ideas before I even come on stream to talk about 